New tonight, a plan for relief for the postal workers and customers in our mountain communities. Yeah, we have a better idea of the challenges those locations face compared to other post offices now around the state. Your reporter in the mountain, Spencer Wilson, has covered this issue for years. And Spencer, once again, the equation comes down to money, at least in part. Yeah, guys, there were 10 recommendations from the inspector general's office saying how they could help get our newsrooms, excuse me, our mailrooms snipping a little bit faster. One of them, of course, is paying people more, but the other part of this is actually training the employees for however long they stick around. Mountain mailrooms like Steamboat Springs, Dillon, and BV are understaffed and falling behind on deliveries. The inspector general's report shows these mailrooms have more issues with on-time deliveries than any other place in Colorado or the nation on average. However, we actually recommend that the Postal Service look into the feasibility of paying these people in mountain towns based on the locality. Uh, the Postal Service actually disagreed with that recommendation. One of the most talked about solutions is to increase pay for most post employees working in the most expensive environments. Right now, all postal workers get paid the same for the same job across the country. But something has to change. The inspector general found 238 boxes piled high in Steamboat Springs' post office, where employees were incorrectly returning to sender instead of delivering those packages. Vail had delays in e-commerce packages because of incorrect staff training. And an investigation revealed 31% of postmasters had never been formally trained for the job. Frisco's mailroom was not on the report, but saw a serious employee shakeup in the last year. Customers adore the current staff for working so hard. They're responsive, they're friendly, they're attentive. It's just been easier than ever to get packages delivered. But they know the cost of how hard they're working to get things in order. They could definitely use a break more than they're getting now. And in the big rush for the holidays, you can bet their jobs are only going to get harder. So keep that in mind when you make your next visit. Now, not all of the uh, mail rooms in this report were from high country. Sometimes they're talking about Pueblo or Boulder in order to help kind of balance things out. But 13 out of 14 of those mail rooms all had a hard time keeping employees past the first three months that they came on board. So they get a new hire, they stick around for around three or so months or even shorter, and then just have to get out of there. That's part of their retention problem and part of the issues they're trying to get solved with all of this. And that potentially has the problem to lead to mishaps with deliveries, things getting lost in the back room because they simply can't keep track of who is doing what, when. One of the big problems, guys. So, Spencer, how long do those mailrooms have to put these new changes into effect and to get things right? Michael, it really comes down to April 30th is when the inspector general at least expects these uh, mailrooms to get back to them saying, here's the things that we've done to help implement your recommendations, minus the fact that they simply said they're not going to do the increase in pay. Now, the inspector general's office said they're going to go back and try and negotiate with the U.S. Postal Service and say, you guys should really consider this or at least something similar. But in terms of simply saying pay them more for if they live in more expensive places, not going to happen at this point. All right, Spencer, thank you so much. And Spencer has covered stories recently from Jackson and Garfield counties to Summit, Eagle counties, Clear Creek. You can send him your story ideas through cbscolorado.com.